everyone welcome to the session 4 of uh, a transport player under vitu e shikshana program i thank vitu e shikshana program for uh, providing me the opportunity to teach uh, computer network and security in uh, last session we discussed uh, what is reliable data Uh, transfer protocol and uh, uh, basics of uh, stop and wait TRQ. In this session, we will continue with the stop and wait TRQ. Stop and wait TRQ is the simplest flow control method. In this, the sender will send one frame at a time to the receiver. The sender will stop and wait for the acknowledgement from the receiver. so this is a simple protocol to implement here after sending the data the sender has to wait for an acknowledgement in the diagram you can see uh, when the sender sends the data the timer starts and uh, it waits for an acknowledgement so the name itself indicates that after sending data you have to wait for an acknowledgement send the data stop and wait for the acknowledgement from the receiver see after the sending the data here uh, the timer starts when the acknowledgement is received uh, it will send the next data until that it has to wait uh, for the acknowledgement uh, for the recently sent data so the characteristics of stop and wait is it is used in connection oriented communication and it offers error and flow control it is used in data link and transport layers stop and wait erq mainly implements sliding window protocol concept with window size 1 because you have to send only one packet at a time after uh, receiving the acknowledgement for the sent packet you have to send the next packet so the window size is always 1 window size means it is simply an advertisement of how much data the receiving device is willing to receive at any point in time so window size of uh, stop and wait erq is uh, one because after sending data it has to uh, uh, stop and wait for an acknowledgement for the sent data so uh, the window size is always one in stop and wait erq erq means automatic repeat request it is also known as automatic repeat query it is an error control method for data transmission that uses acknowledgements and timeouts to achieve reliable data transmission over an unreliable communication channel so uh, stop and wait is an erq protocol erq is a automatic repeat request it uh, is used to, it is used to provide reliable data transmission over an unreliable communication channel and the window size of stop and wait erq is always one because after sending the data it has to stop and wait for an acknowledgement when the acknowledgement is received for the sent data it is going to send the next message so it is uh, a very simple to implement and uh, uh, the window size of uh, uh, stop and wait erq is uh, 1 uh, coming to the efficiency of uh, uh, stop and wait uh, the efficiency the uh, efficiency means uh, it uh, includes uh, so many aspects uh, the stop and wait is a flow control protocol it is a Uh, flow control uh, protocol in which the sender sends one packet and waits for the receiver to acknowledge and then it will send the next packet so here after sending the packet uh, it has to wait uh, for the acknowledgement it will not send the next packet until the acknowledgement is uh, received uh, for the sent packet in case if the acknowledgement is not received the sender will retransmit the packet so uh, the retransmit uh, will take place when the uh, timer time outs uh, so this is the simplest one and easy to implement but the main disadvantage is the efficiency because the efficiency of stop and wait is uh, very low why is the efficiency is low because 
after sending the uh, packet it has to wait for indefinite amount of time uh, when the acknowledgement is received the next packet is sent that's why the efficiency is very low so stop and wait is a flow control protocol and it sends one packet and waits for the acknowledgement uh, for this reason the efficiency is very low because automatic repeat request uh, means uh, error control method for uh, data transmission uh, that uses acknowledgement and timeouts to achieve reliable data transmission over an unreliable communication channel in the stop and uh, wait uh, after sending the data it has to wait for an indefinite amount of time uh, for the acknowledgement for that purpose uh, the efficiency is very low if the timer uh, is implemented after sending the data you have to start the timer uh, before uh, the timer expires uh, the acknowledgement should be received otherwise the packet is retransmitted so it provides reliable data uh, transmission over unreliable uh, communication channel coming to the advantages of stop and wait protocol the advantages of stop and wait protocol is it is very simple and easy to implement it is simple and uh, easy to implement and the main advantage of uh, this protocol is uh, the accuracy because it uh, provides reliable uh, data transmission mm -hmm. the next frame is sent uh, only when the first frame is acknowledged so there is no chance of any frame being lost it is very reliable and here the flow control is achieved and uh, the window size is uh, one the next frame is sent only when the first frame is acknowledged so there is no chance of any frame being lost in stop and wait uh, this is the major advantage of stop and wait erq protocol and uh, the disadvantage of stop and wait protocol is we can send only one packet at a time because the window size mm -hmm. is one uh, for stop and wait for this purpose uh, the uh, disadvantage of uh, stop and wait is uh, only one packet you can send at any moment of time. If the distance between the sender and the receiver is large, then the uh, propagation delay uh, would be more than the transmission uh, delay. Hence, the efficiency would become very low. What is this uh, transmission delay and the propagation uh, delay? See, transmission delay means the time taken by the sender to send all the bits of the frame onto the wire is called as transmission delay. This uh, is very important. I repeat, transmission delay and propagation delay. What is the difference between transmission delay and the propagation delay? Transmission delay means it is time taken by the sender to send all the bits of the frame because data means uh, bytes. Uh, right, uh, bits uh, means uh, for uh, one byte, eight bits will be there. So all bits of the frame onto the wire uh, is uh, called transmission delay. So uh, the transmission delay uh, is more, propagation delay is also more if the distance uh, uh, between the sender and receiver is uh, large. And uh, what is propagation delay? Uh, the propagation delay is the time taken by the last bit of the frame to reach uh, one side to the other side is called propagation delay. I have understood. See, the propagation delay means it is the time taken by the last uh, bit of the frame to reach one side to the other side is called propagation delay, whereas the transmission delay is the time taken by the sender to send all the bits of the frame onto the wire is called as transmission delay. And uh, uh, coming to the third point, after every transmission, the sender has to wait for the acknowledgement and this time will increase the total transmission time. This makes the transmission process slow. So this is what the main disadvantage of a stop and wait uh, ERQ protocol. See, after uh, every transmission, the sender has to wait for the acknowledgement and the time uh, and this time will increase the total transmission time just now i said the transmission time is uh, time taken by the sender to send all the bits of the frame onto the wire so uh, this makes the transmission process 
slow. That's why the main disadvantage of stop and wait is propagation delay increases, transmission delay increases if the distance between the sender and the receiver is uh, large. And also it has to wait for an indefinite amount of time uh, uh, because of this efficiency also uh, decreases. And uh, when the uh, timer uh, starts, uh, before uh, the timer expires, it has to get the uh, acknowledgement. Next, coming to the sliding window protocol. Sliding window protocol are data link layer protocols for reliable and sequential delivery of data frames. The sliding window is also used in a transmission control protocol. The sliding window protocol is used in transmission control protocol. In this protocol, multiple frames can be sent by a sender at a time before receiving an acknowledgement from the receiver. The term sliding window refers to the imaginary box to hold frames. Sliding window method is also known as uh, windowing. Okay. It is also known as uh, windowing. In this protocol, multiple frames can be sent by a sender at a time before receiving an acknowledgement. So here, uh, window is a slide, uh, window uh, slides a bit uh, either to the left or to the right. The term sliding window refers to the imaginary boxes to hold frames. And uh, it is uh, maintained uh, at uh, sender side as well as at the receiver side. And uh, sliding window method is also known as windowing. Sliding window protocols are data link layer protocol for reliable and sequential delivery of data frames okay next working principle of sliding window in this protocol in these protocols the sender has a buffer called the sending window and the receiver has a buffer called the receiving uh, window the sliding uh, window is a technique for sending multiple frames. Uh, using sliding window, we can send multiple uh, frames at a time. It controls the uh, data packets between the two devices where reliable and gradual delivery of data frame is needed. It is also uh, used in TCP, that is transmission control protocol. TCP is a reliable uh, protocol. In uh, TCP, you have to establish the connection before sending uh, data. For establishing the connection, three-way handshake is used. In three-way handshake, first you have to send the connection request. Afterwards, you should get the connection replay. Then you can send the data. If there is no data to send, you have to uh, disconnect the request. Uh, for that, a disconnection requ request is sent. Uh, for that, you need to get disconnection replay. Then the connection is successfully uh, closed and uh, it is disconnected. So uh, the sliding window is a technique for sending multiple frames at a time. We can send multiple frames at a time without receiving the acknowledgement and it controls the data packets between the two devices uh, where reliable and gradual delivery of data frame is needed. It is uh, used in PCP, that is transmission control protocol. It is a uh, connection oriented uh, protocol, reliable uh, protocol, right? And in this technique, each frame has sent from the uh, sequence number. For every packet, you need to add sequence number and identifier. And also, the sequence number are used to find the missing data in the receiver. Here, the sequence number plays very important role and the sequence number are used to find the missing data in the receiver end. The purpose of the sliding window technique is to avoid duplicate data. So it uses the sequence number. Sequence number is used to identify uh, which packet is sent and for which packet the acknowledgement is received. Sequence number plays very important role in identifying the missing data in the receiver end. So the sequence number are used uh, in uh, uh, many applications. The sequence numbers are numbered as modulo n. Uh, for example, if the uh, sending uh, window size is 4, then the sequence number will be uh, from 0 to 3. 4 
uh, packets that is 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 like this it continues the number of bits in the sequence number is 2 uh, that is uh, the binary sequence 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 uh, that is 2 to the power of 2 means four different combinations you are going to get uh, this is uh, what the technique uh, used in uh, sliding window in sliding the window the sequence number is used and the sequence number are numbered as modulo n and uh, if the window size is uh, 4 then the sequence number will be uh, 0 to 3 and the number of bits in the sequence number is 2 to generate the binary sequence 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. because if the sequence number is 2 then uh, 4 packets uh, for a binary sequence you can have that is 2 to the power of 2 is uh, 4 right and uh, the size of the receiving window is the maximum number of frames that uh, the receiver can accept at a time so this is what the receiving window or the size of the receiving window uh, all about that is the size of the receiving window uh, the uh, is the maximum number of frames that the receiver can accept at uh, any point of time it determines the maximum number of frames that the sender can send before receiving acknowledgement right and the maximum number of frames that sender can send without acknowledgement is sender window size it can send uh, the uh, data without receiving acknowledgement uh, until uh, the uh, window size exceeds so the maximum number of frames that sender can send without acknowledgement is always equal to sender window size and uh, sender window size and receiver window size uh, will be same sometimes they will be a difference the size of the receiving window is the maximum number of frames that the receiver can accept at any point of time so it determines the maximum number of frames that the sender can send before receiving the acknowledgement in a stop and wait, uh, what is the uh, window size? The window size is always one because after sending uh, the uh, data, it has to wait for an acknowledgement. Uh, if the acknowledgement is not received, it has to resend. It has to resend the same data again. Uh, so, uh, in uh, 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 window size is increased. If the window size is increased, if the sliding window protocol is implemented, then you can send uh, many packets. Uh, without receiving the acknowledgement so this is how sliding window protocol uh, works see sliding window protocol the size of the sliding window protocol is uh, 4 that is 0 1 2 3 here also the receiving uh, window and the sending window maintains the uh, sliding window the frame 0 and 1 is sent uh, and uh, you are going to uh, get the acknowledgement to from the receiving side after getting the acknowledgement to you can uh, the uh, the sliding window slides to the right the sliding window sli slides to slides to the right then you, another of four uh, packets two three zero one like this uh, it continues it uh, sends the uh, frame uh, two then it uh, uh, is uh, received at the receiver uh, then you are going to get the acknowledgement uh, three that is uh, next you have to send the third uh, frame like this uh, the uh, sliding window protocol works at the sending side and uh, at the receiving side uh, see observe here 0 1 2 3 are the uh, uh, packets the size of the uh, sliding window is 4 uh, both at the sending side and at the receiving side you are sending two frames that is the frame 0 and the frame 1 uh, those uh, frames are received at the receiver the next uh, frame to be sent is 2 so uh, the receiver will send the acknowledgement 2 uh, right then uh, the sender will send the frame 2 afterwards uh, the receiver will send the acknowledgement 3 means uh, the sender has to send the third frame like this the sliding window protocol works and it is very simple to implement here you can send multiple frames without uh, receiving the acknowledgement based on the uh, window size at the receiver okay the important point of a sliding window protocol is sliding window protocol is a flow control protocol 
and it allows the sender to send multiple frames before uh, needing the acknowledgement. Before uh, receiving the acknowledgement, you can send multiple frames to the uh, receiver based on the window size. And uh, uh, sender slides its window on receiving the acknowledgement uh, for the sent frames. Uh, only when the acknowledgement is uh, received uh, for the sent frame, the sender slides its uh, window uh, to the uh, right. And uh, this allows the sender to send more frames. And it is uh, called so because it involves uh, sliding of sender's window. You can uh, slide, you can move the uh, sliding window uh, to the right side after receiving the acknowledgement for the sent frame. Uh, acknowledgement for the sent frame. Uh, frame so it is called as a sliding window these are some of the points uh, you should remember uh, about the sliding window protocol and uh, uh, sliding window protocol as uh, two protocols two ERP protocols one is uh, go back in and another one is selective repeat okay thank you in the next session we will discuss uh, types of sliding window protocols